Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Got a question for you. Are you the crafty one in the family? My guess is yes. And because of that, the holidays are here and you're going to get pegged to do so many crafty things. Am I right, ladies? Well, if that's the case, I have a really cute little Thanksgiving placeholder table card that you can customize and you can crank these out assembly style. And then when you show up for Thanksgiving dinner, your status as the crafty one will never be questioned. And if you just simply aspire to be known as the crafty one, then this project is totally for you. Let's jump in. So you're going to need some supplies and they're pretty basic. So let's, let's get, let's, let's review, shall we? First things first, you're going to need some cardstock of your choosing. And this cardstock needs to be big enough to accommodate whatever shaped die you decide to use. And I am going to be using this shaped die from Gina K Designs and Thermaweb. These are Gina's decorative labels, and I thought this would be pretty dang cute. You're going to need some stamps, and I'm using my 30 Days of Thankful Stamps from Simon Says Stamp. It's just a set full of gratitude sentiments. I am going to be using the Thankful and For You stamp along with some of the little images. I'm going to be using an embossing pen from Ranger, and I'm also going to be using some Versamark sticky embossing ink, along with some fine detail gold embossing powder from Gina K Designs. All right, Misty Tool, very important for cranking them out. Got a little purple tape. And another important part of this is having some kind of a scoring tool. Now, a score buddy comes with a great little tool. I just use my fancy Teflon bone folder, but you gotta have one if you don't wanna pull your hair out. Okay, so whatever size your die is, you need to make sure that you cut a piece of cardstock that can fit this die folded in half, more or less. It doesn't have to completely accommodate the die because we're gonna be partially die cutting. So I'm gonna score here at three inches and this will work with the die that I'm using. Give it a nice press here with the flat side of my bone folder. And now it's time to cut. You're going to take your die and line it up so that part of your die is off the edge with the fold. This will allow the whole piece to stay together as one card when you run it through your die cut machine. Now I'm going to use a metal adapter plate, um, it's a shim really for my machine because I just get better cuts because you're cutting through two layers of cardstock here, right? So I'm going to run that through, bring it back out, and the result is... A partially cut card that's still intact at the top. That's your placeholder. Okay, now you're going to unfold it and you're going to put it in your stamp positioner. Now I prefer the Misty. It's my favorite tool to use for stamping. But a stamp positioner is important because if you're going to stamp a bunch of these, it's nice to have them be in the right place. So you're going to get everything positioned in the right place first, make sure it looks good, so that you could proceed with cranking them out. Now first I'm just going to pick up the thankful and a couple, I'm using a little leaf and some acorns. And for the for you sentiment, I'm just going to position it. I put some white paper so I could see what I was doing. It's a little tricky for me to get some of those sentiments lined up perfectly, so I like to do them sometimes right on the misty door. And I'm also using a scrap of cardstock. I know, I'm, it seems like I'm wasting craft cardstock, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice one piece for the good of the entire project because all I want to make sure here is that the for you is in the right place. Now, critical step. You need to remove static from your card. And you use a powder tool of some sort. I use Embossing Magic. Run it all over so that when you take your sticky ink, the Versamark here in this case, and the embossing pen, and you stick that down, right, once you've stamped it, then your powder technically is only gonna stick to where you stamp. Now I have to show you this. I just received this in the mail from a lovely YouTube subscriber and she felt bad that I didn't have sleeves in some of my videos to do the press down because sometimes my hand will stick. Her mother knitted this for me. How cool is this? I, I am so cool now because I have a single fingerless glove. I just think it's great, anyway. All right, the stamping looks great. And now I'm going to take the embossing pen. Now I'm just going to tell you straight up, my handwriting is not whimsical. I, it is not like, I'm not like a fairy with beautiful, magical 
penmanship. But I can write people's names on the reverse side of each card, and that's how we're going to customize this. And the other helpful thing is in case anyone forgets who's at the table, well, this will be facing out. I don't really think that's going to happen with my family, but you know, some of us are getting older. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Going to put the gold powder on, tap it off. Now, if you, like me, have a few areas where the powder did in fact stick, and again, I didn't have enough embossing magic on there, just take a dry brush and brush it off. Get your heat tool hot first so that the time that it has to hit the paper is going to minimize the warping. Once it's hot, you just go over that stamped image until it turns shiny and melted, and you have just embossed and customized a Thanksgiving placeholder card with a darling shape, whatever shape you like. I just think these dies from Gina are adorable. And if you have problems with it standing up, you could take a little piece of tape and just kind of hold it together. But how cute is that going to be? And again, you have now forever been solidified as the crafty one. Thanks so much for watching. I would love to have you become a subscriber. And I will see you back here with another crafty project soon.